Welcome to this free webinar where we're giving a taste of some of the contents at the UK Summit. Um, my name is Dave Brunt and I manage the activities at the Lean Enterprise Academy um, and I'm joined by uh, Claire and Brett today. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, we're a non-for-profit organisation that was set up by Dan Jones over 20 years ago um, and what we're doing is we're, we help customers become self-reliant on their lean journey. Uh, take a look at the website, it explains our history, um, what, we've, what we're researching currently, how we're working with partner companies and all of our learning, teaching and coaching and sharing activities. Uh, the summits our conference that we develop, um, we must have done about, I would think, 15, 20 of these uh, over the over these, maybe, maybe a few more. Um, and the idea is to help people uh, learning and implementing lean thinking. It's a key in-person activity and it helps the delegates by sharing how lean can be used to solve the problems of today and tomorrow, whilst enabling participants to build their own network of lean thinkers. Um, we've got four th key themes for 2023. Uh, the first one's the productivity challenge. Uh, supply chain disruption, the environmental crisis and lessons learned from COVID-19. Um, and the principle that's running through all of this is, is, the, uh, is, is the, uh, the idea of Kaizen. Uh, there are both keynote plenary sessions and there are learning sessions, uh, which you can tailor to your agenda. Um, in most cases, there are four breakout sessions that run in parallel. So there's lots of choice across the, uh, across the two days. Uh, there are over 30 speakers from 15 companies. Um, they're up in the top right of the of the slide, including the Aramis Group, Iberia, Securus, the NHS, Tales, Technique FMC, Ecobat, Toyota, and of course our guest today. <laughs> so um, so we're told that it's the best event of its kind, and we always do it around a theme. So we're always trying to, rather than just ask. You know, you, 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 when you do these things, you can either scramble to get people that you think are going to be interesting or you think about the, the questions that people are asking and you design it back from the questions. And that's basically what we've always done. And, um, you know, the, the team, you know, Dan and I used to spend hours thinking about what, what we were going to do. But now we we do that as a as a collective team. Um, and that's why we ended up with those four key themes that you, that, that I've just um, explained. Uh, yeah, OK, so uh, before we get to, into the discussion, I'd just like to take a few minutes really to position where strategy deployment uh, fits into a lean approach, uh, just in case there's new people out there. There's a lot of people I know here that know this already, but uh, just in case you don't, just sort of position it to, as we start. So Hoshin Canary or strategy deployment is a well-defined method to execute strategy. It was developed in the 1950s in Japan and now it's used in multiple companies all over the world. And uh, strategy deployment is really the linkage sort of between the strategic plan of the company and the execution of that plan. Uh, and it's probably really key to note that it isn't about strategy planning yeah that's a prior process to that yeah so uh, where does that really fit in with a lean approach well a lean approach starts with the customer as we all know asking what value we need to provide to that customer so that's the the diamond there that's on the right hand side which is our value driven purpose for an organization so once we have a value driven purpose then we need a strategy with clear goals and objectives uh, to be developed to achieve that value driven purpose in your organization and uh, then we kind of need to uh, ask a question after that. Once our value driven purpose is clear, we've got some goals on objectives to deploy down the organisation. Then we need to ask the question, what's the problems we need to solve to achieve those goals and objectives in an organisation? And uh, this question is really kind of like fractal. It's like a snowflake. Uh, so it applies equally to the whole organisation and at a team level and individual level. And that's why we need to deploy uh, those goals and objectives down and then people do the bottom up action planning to actually solve those gaps on the strategy and goals. So uh, so there's some questions really that you need to think about uh, when deploying and executing strategy. And the first one really is, does your organisation have a clear purpose? Yeah. And what have you uh, kind of made that uh, understandable to everybody? 
So do individuals have a clear line of sight to that purpose? Uh, and do they understand their contribution to that purpose? And what are the problems that they need to solve uh, that contribute to that uh, achieving the uh, value driven purpose? So this really is where a well defined strategy deployment process uh, can really help uh, align and support your people in doing that. So before I sort of grill uh, uh, Claire and Brett uh, with questions, yeah, uh, they've been helping uh, organisations in automotive, medical, manufacturing, pharmaceutical, logistics, transport, engineering, healthcare, finance, banking even, uh, and FMCG as well to uh, sort of simplify the challenges of executing stra uh, strategic plans and uh, providing a digital solution for doing that. Yeah, so they've got uh, many years of experience uh, in doing that. So Brett and Claire, do you just want to quickly introduce yourselves, so uh, who you yeah, are? Yeah, sure. Yes, that, thank you, David. Thank you, Peter. So my name is Claire Phillips. I'm a founder, um, director of Strategy Deployment. Um, as Peter said, I've worked with Peter in the past in more than one occasion. Um, we have a digital solution that allows you to visualise and align your policy deployment and strategy deployment with your lean activity and then measure the impact that that activity is having on your key measures, whether it be financial or non-financial, and then gives you the insight that you really need to make sure that your, your strategy is actually um, aligned with what you're trying to achieve and your vision, but also that that strategy is on track. And I use the analogy that it's a bit like an oil tanker. If you've got foresight, once you've blown off course, it's going to take you quite a long time to course correct. But if you've got uh, the visualization of how you're performing, whether that be on a weekly or monthly basis, it allows you to make that course correction and put um, countermeasures in place so that you can keep that strategy in line with what your expectations are. But if it's not in line, what are you doing to get it back online? So that's a hundred thousand foot view of what we do. Um, we're looking forward to taking questions uh, from from the team today. And we also look forward to meeting you in um, Liverpool in April. So uh, thank you very much for the time. Uh, we really, truly appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Um, well, I don't know how to follow that one up now. I think Claire's <laughs> done everything. <laughs> Sorry, how long Claire. have we got again? That's all right. Um, so Claire's done what we do as business. I think from my perspective, I've worked with companies for over 20 years to embed <laughs> digital solutions to help them with their practices that they're currently doing. All sorts of things from lean to procurement to financial to strategy now all across the breadth of all business practices to try to get digital solutions in place to help them achieve their goals and to solve their sort of like processes. Well, that's a, it's a great lead in, Brett, then to the first grilling Thank question you. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> like it was rehearsed. So what's the uh, what <clears throat> challenges have you seen when uh, deploying strategy in organisations? Because you've done that in many now, so it's good learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, where to start? Well, to be honest, I think you covered some of them at the very start there on the fact of like, you've got to find what problems need to be addressed first. And that intellectual kind of thinking actually, it's not just a case of going in and putting it into a, a digital platform and going, oh, this will now solve the problem. You actually have to do a lot of the kind of crunching before you actually get that problem statements and you kind of have your value driven pro your kind of value driven problems in place there. So that part needs to be in place before you start looking at it. Then you've got all sorts of things from communication. You've got to, so communication I think covers a number of things. Communication, collaboration, the two C's there. So if you're going to go down the route of defining your strategy, you need to have brought in other parties who are knowledge experts in those areas to help define it. Um, You've also, the communication piece is important not to just do it, there you go, first buzzword, siloed mentality, whereby you just sit within your room and try to define all these problems, and then come out to the business and go, right, this is how we're going to solve everything. This is where the collaboration comes in. And then you communicate out what you're doing and get 
I think Hoshin does it quite well in this catch all mentality, whereby you come up with the, the problem, share it with others, and then people push back and then you go up and down the chain, so to speak. Um, and then visualizing it, I think visually, okay, I work from a very visual point of view that I like to see what it means. So what is it that we're actually trying to achieve and what is it going to look like in the future? And then to be able to kind of share that again with the business. So so you mentioned visualization and communication there. So what does the kind of digital solution help with that? <clears throat> um, well, what you, what you end up with is, well, there's lots of tools out there, to be honest, already. So you've got things like that support these kind of practices. So you have things like an X matrix and you have bowling charts, you've got planning tables, you even have CI trackers as well, Peter. So you've got all of these different ways that you can actually kind of visualize the strategy. And how you do that then is that you quite often end up with your tool of choice and then that's the way that you roll it out, I guess, is that that's kind of the, the way that you share that information is via that kind of tool that you want it to be. Um, I think there's, um, yeah, I think that's the way that you would do it. I think from a digital perspective, there's digital and there's, I kind of see it in two different ways. There's kind of like desktop digital, so you end up with tools like Excel that are very easy and quick to use. So you've got Excel where you can take a template offline up from the internet, for example, and be able to build your X matrix and do the connecting of dots in that particular manner. But when it comes to then scaling it, it's more difficult because as you go down kind of the levels of the organization, you end up with multiple versions of that Excel kind of spreadsheet kind of X matrix and you've got multiple people trying to manage the same bits of data but in their own versions so you lose a bit of version control on that yeah I think it actually creates even more work in the organization yeah. that isn't necessarily value added yeah yeah so I think that there's an there, there is a bit of an irony here whereby you create something like that and then you end up adding an administrative burden but actually you're talking about lean for example yeah and I, I, think, I think the thing I'd say, Peter, is that when you're, let's say, using an Excel <coughs> template or other means of, of um, tracking your your strategy deployment, you know, it's it's unwieldy and it's very difficult sometimes in a non-digital platform to be able to actually see the sort of top to bottom, bottom up accountability. Mm. Uh, because, you know, people don't necessarily see the people below them or the people below, above them because everybody's working in silos. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's quite critical. It's also having that ability to have the accountability of who is responsible for delivering towards the whole strategic plan. Yeah, from experience, it's, uh, you know, the big disconnect often is we you know we deploy goals and objectives down but the bottom up action planning is then not connected properly with that yeah. how have you found so, that yeah so I, I think that's true i think that's where i was stumbling a little bit there is so on the visualization side of things i think tools like the x matrix if we just take it in isolation out of digital for the moment and just say it's very good at stating what you're going to do to a certain level yeah so it's very much done from a top-down perspective. Unless you work almost at the plant level and go, okay, we'll have a X matrix for the plant. So we just purely look at the, the, the strategy for a manufacturing plant, yeah, and then try to do it like that. But even then, it kind of gets complicated because you've got different aspects of it. You've got the quality side. You've got the just the production lines themselves and, like, the three shifts potentially per production line. You've got all of these operating operations, you've then got the health and safety guys, engineering, all of these guys all have an impact into it and they'll all be feeding their own pieces up in theory into that X matrix. So to your point there, it's like trying to have a very high level view, which is you're using the X matrix to do, to do that visualization of your strategy, but then the communication 
almost sometimes comes bottom up to actually go, well, actually, we're doing all this and where do we fit into it? So, yeah, so you end up with then going away from, so you have the X matrix almost as a static tool and then people are then running their spreadsheets themselves and then everyone's the trying input. to collaborate yeah. on, a, on the daily huddle or something like that and then work out the end of the week or the end of the month to go, okay, right, how did that fit in with the strategy again? Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to break it back from digital start with to just say, look, these are kind of the problems that we encounter with having kind of static tools today. Yeah. And then, even you know, from working with executives in the past, you know, for them to understand where they are in real time on their strategy plan and the execution of it. Yeah, yeah. that's, you know, a really hard yeah. thing. And, okay. a, and a lot of and, and a lot of things happen minutes before like you have your daily huddles or your pre-production huddles or pre-shift huddles and stuff but the data is often going in just before those meetings so it's actually it's there's a lag time potentially between what's actually happened to actually getting into that meeting to discuss it nothing is some okay i'm being very flippant here but through that shift stuff is happening so things need to react so you need to react as as issues arise and they will do when they're major ones but if you need to change something then it doesn't necessarily hit or potentially even the monthly reviews so what, what do you think the main benefits are of having a digital solution then for all of that yeah um the main one obviously we speak from the digital side because this is what we do um is that connectivity i think the connection of the dots of what's happening and i think you said earlier that clear visualization line of sight from what was the problem to start with what are you doing to achieve it and actually do you know that you've achieved it so being able to follow that thread through through that whole process because you've got a by digitalizing it what you've got is you're able to because of the world as it is today and we know technology has moved on drastically just to go back to that point around if you walk around the the, the production lines everything now there's not there's still paper being put on the walls to show what's happening but now you've got massive screens up with all dials and images going on things tools are being connected in to actually see what the overall operating efficiency is of a one line and everything else like that and you can react immediately at that very tactical operational level but that information needs to also go up to the overall strategy of what's actually going on and how you can take this low level data and be able to summarize it so what happens now if you have a more digital solution which is more holistic across the business is you're able to now with all the stuff that goes on everyone talks about integrations apis if that all connects in then you're getting that real-time information and can kind of declares now analogy of moving a ship then you can move much quicker yeah faster. yeah 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 and it also and, goes and, to the point also goes to the point of being a lean environment because you know we all know that when you've got disparate systems or you know manual intervention that pulling data for a weekly review or a, a monthly review is very time consuming yeah. you know and if you've got a, a a digital platform that is integrating with other systems and allows you at the touch of a button to pull your your reporting together that's a very lean way of doing things you know and it, it's you know time has has value you know and we've yeah, got no, one yeah. we we've got one instance whereby digitalizing um their activities they're taking two and a half days a month out of each of their sites purely purely in reporting yeah. and when you start adding up you know the average of that those people's time it doesn't mean to say it's a it's a hard benefit but it allows them to get on and do their jobs you know and to do other things so it has got a lot of benefit although you not, don't necessarily see a monetary value but it actually is allowing people to do you know to do more and 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 not to be bogged down in reporting if that makes sense yeah 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 so just quickly because we're running out of time so last kind of question is is uh you know that that's i'm a realist <laughs> and i've also been you know doing it doing it with you guys what's the challenges what's the main challenges as well of actually 
uh, using a digital system to do this. OK, um, challenges, there's always challenges. Yeah, we've got to be honest about that. I think change is the massive one. I think when you bring in anything at all, even I, don't, I think change is just the answer to most things. If you bring in something new to within the business, change is always is always the battle, really. So because you're introducing a new something new into the way in which someone's working on a day to day basis, as much as they may have complained in the past, how things were inefficient, everything else like that to move to something different is still a still something that they will sort of like because you need training you need to understand it you're concerned that it will disrupt what you've done previously so change is is one of the biggest one and and we do things now with campaigns intro, early introductions bring everyone on board make things like I said at the beginning make more things more collaborative so that when this change happens everyone is aware of it and it's not something thrust yeah, upon them yeah. whereas Whereas, uh, whereas 20 years ago, it was literally, we're rolling out a new bit of software, turn up Monday, and you look at your your old school sort of like hard desktop, you go, what's happened today and stuff like that. Whereas now, you're like, everyone is brought on board and everyone knows what's going to happen. You go through a proper training program, everything else like that. I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Um, I think the belief that bringing in a digital platform will solve all the problems is also one of the massive ones is just, yeah, we'll implement it and everything will go away. Whereas, whereas actually there's work to be done because there's a reason for these things. So there's work to be done to get ready. There's almost like a implement test, implementation ready stage before you go live with any digital platform. Um, and which therefore involves time. And I think the final one is actually just around not overwhelming yourself with all the data. Companies, organizations have been going for so long, they have so much data historically within the business, and then try to move all of that into the new platforms. And it's actually quite a good chance to actually turn around and go, actually, do we need all of this? Just because we've done it 10 years ago from reporting side of things, is it still relevant today? And it gives organizations a chance to kind of to streamline, yeah. to like make the, yeah, you know, I think they're the main ones really. Okay, Brett, well, thank you very much. Yeah, we just, uh, we're no gonna problem. open it up now, I think. Yeah, so Dave, over, back over to you. Sorry, Pete, I was on mute then. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so we, we, we've, we've talked about, um, about the, uh, this, this whole topic uh, i suppose the question is what questions do people have the, the, there hasn't been anything in the chat um but um let, let's do a bit of a, an open mic and while people are thinking about it I, i've got a question um i was in toyota a couple of weeks ago and of course they are notorious for their manual system really you know yeah. they, they, they do yeah. lots of stuff on excel and they do lots of stuff in pay with paperwork but actually since the pandemic they've been experimenting and doing quite a lot of their asakai meetings using teams because not everybody was in um my question is how have you seen teams organize meetings when they've moved to a digital environment and is it different to being in a more manual environment um that's a good question so i've i've experienced teams meetings so like within within the within certain plants and everything else like that um and to me how can I, it's fairly basic answer They've literally just run the Teams meeting and then used the platforms that they had to share that information easily. But what you've got is you've got people from that are working from home being able to actually get their data in without necessarily being within the, the plant itself. So you've got potentially the quality guy wasn't able to be in one of the days, but all of his information was actually in place ahead of the, the daily meeting because he didn't need to be in the office if that made it, in the office yeah, in the yeah. factory to be able to make those particular changes 
and he could participate in the kind of discussions around what was going on. There was no, and to be honest, that was one of the things that when we were back on the road and able to go out and see people again, was how things have changed and people are far more, okay, there's still whiteboards with post-it notes being moved around and stuff like that, but they're very much aware that actually that isn't going to be sustainable with people working at home and stuff like that. Yeah. So, we, yeah. so we, we did some work earlier last year, beginning of last year, to actually try to streamline that, just moving tickets around piece, because the guy, the guys that working from home on that particular, they had no idea what was going on, yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, P Peter's j just just made an excellent comment on the uh, about this on the in the chat. You know, of course, we would say there's there's all this value of writing the data, writing stuff down, putting it on the whiteboard. I mean, I never forget one of the guys from South Africa that was ex Toyota guy that I did a lot of work with, um, well for about eight to ten years. He used to say when people were marking on the chart, watch the people's eyes in the team, you know, and they follow it. And if, and if it's going up, then that's good. And if it's going down, then, you know, that's, that, that's, that's something different. Um, you know, and, and as you say, the brain works differently when you're just reading or writing the number yourself. And I suppose the, the dilemma is whether people question enough or what would they need to do to learn how to question the data when the data is just provided rather than yeah. analyze, you know? And it's a bit like, um, uh, we haven't got time, but analog cars versus versus um, um, today's cars. And, you know, you just plug it in and the computer tells you what's wrong. Whereas when yeah. you've got carbs and a points and system and all the rest of it, you've actually can see the variables. So, you know, and I'm not saying carbs and points are better. Uh, obviously, the electronic ones are much more reliable, but but it, but it's interesting that it's a different type of problem solving um, in the former to the to the latter. So, OK, so I, 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 I was just going to say, having witnessed that as well, I think there's a balance between that because what what I've seen, okay, on this one of these examples is things are digital in the kind of like when you're crunching the data and stuff like that. But to have got to that point, you've still got sort of like the the production shift huddle happening where they're actually got potentially a part and they're trying to problem solve what the issue is with that particular part to then be able to. So they're doing that activity, and that's I don't think that you can't you can't digitize that you can't stop that. That is how these things work. It's just the outcome of that then gets fed up and then it goes up the chain to a more yeah, digital yeah. kind of world. I think it's just a balancing of trying to work out where it fits and not trying to make everything automated. Yeah, but it, I mean, I think it, it's going yeah. to be interesting to, to see because, because actually for some of these things, there are, you know, Industry 4.0 is not sold in that, no. in that realm. It's sold as digital is better and, uh, and 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 it will be interesting to see how people adapt to use the technology for their to solve their own problems really yeah. I, I think that, that's the, that's that's the interesting thing really um okay so okay so Gla gladys oh, pete you could uh, you could answer some of this so how much time to spend in the meetings to review the objectives or or even brett could, could you uh, what advice would you give us to stop the excess of meetings? <laughs> <laughs> Was that me or Peter? Who's going to go? You, you, you go, Brett. Yeah, yeah, you go, Brett. Yeah. It's all right. Oh, um, I I don't know how long is a piece of string. I think is the answer to that one. Um, it depend. It depends. There you go. There's a good response to it. Okay. So what I've seen is that you can have monthly meetings where you've got all the objectives for that particular year being reviewed within a certain business. And what will happen is they will pinpoint in on the ones that are causing the most pain. And I think that's the best way to do it. I think this, you can talk forever about something that's doing really well. And, but actually, 
what really is going to drive it is what's causing the biggest problems. So yeah. you focus in on the ones that cause the biggest problems. I think that's that's yeah, the answer. And, and it's and it's however long it takes because it may be that it's so critical that you actually almost have to go to root cause at that point. But yeah. Sorry, I can't be more honestly, kind of... Brett. I think the meetings, you know, especially it depends which level in the organization you're talking um, about, but at executive level, it's saved over I would say 80% of the time reviewing information that you need because you've yeah. got it in real time. So yeah. before you go to the meeting, yeah, and actually eventually you can shift to asking what's going to stop us. So more about the risks on the actions yeah. and the strategy than actually just reacting to where we are. Yeah. So yeah. It, it does but, free up in my but case. It's all, it also, Peter, being able to see you know, where, when you've got it dig, visualised and digitalised, you can see the trending. So, you know, you probably want to focus on the major initiatives that are red, for instance. But what really is interesting is that those initiatives and actions that are aligned to your strategy that are currently green, but because of historical data, we can see through trending that they're going in the wrong direction. So it's an early warning system. So it's almost focusing on those that are critically red and those that are going to make your life difficult in the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and that's what, you know, that's why you need a review process to keep those things on track, don't you, and react to yeah. it. The quicker you can react to it, so the easier that is to review and you've got all the information there, the more we can review to keep it on track, yeah? Whereas when I started, I remember going to my first plan, we didn't, we only reviewed it once a month. Well, hell, it's too late then, isn't it, yeah? It's yeah. too late. We, we ended up reviewing it, you know, two, at two points in the week, the strategic improvement plan, you know, and to keep the actions on track, yeah? So, yeah, it was a lot, lot better, yeah. Okay, so for those that are interested in the masterclasses, we've got four running Monday 17th. Uh, three of those run in the morning and are repeated in the afternoon. And the last session, the Total Kaizen Culture with Darren, is afternoon only. Um, they're highly interactive sessions, and actually we're going to be talking about those in our next webinar uh, next next week. Um, so I think that was a taster. Um, if it's got you thinking that the summit would be useful, um, there's a little bit more information. Luke, if you want to just switch the slide. Um, on Monday the 17th, we have um, the masterclasses, as I mentioned, half day sessions um, uh, on those. Tuesday and Wednesday are the summit days and the event is being held in Liverpool. Um, and on Thursday, we've got a half day visit to the D-side engine plant, Toyota's D-side engine plant. The idea is to build upon Toyota's keynote and the learning session that they're doing with us. Uh, on how they develop Kaizen spirit. And that's a bespoke visit. It's not something that you can just go on uh, generally. You know, I, I know there are uh, things that totally management centre do, but uh, we've asked them to do that specifically for us as a, um, uh, as a as a process that links into the summit. And of course, we've, uh, we've built the in the benefits relating to solving key problems, productivity improvement and the env environment into that into that whole uh, Whole, whole visit as well uh, and then the last thing is that you might be interested in the platform the online platform that we've got we've we've developed a range of materials um including some free and some paid stuff on there uh, there's the on-demand on webinars there's the learning materials uh, etc so um so you can either take a look at the free ones and have a look at the uh, individual ones or you you know what we'd like you to do is um, be able to get access to all of it and so we've tried to make that really cost effective um, and there's an annual subscription it's 10 pounds a month so 100 pounds a year um, plus, plus that and we're adding more materials uh, each month to that um, and really we we try and invest a lot of the a lot of the money that we get from the from the platform back into the platform we're trying to build up a really comprehensive uh set of materials online so um i think that's about it our next webinar topic is an overview of the pre-summit master classes hope you found it useful and of interest um over to everybody else if anybody wants to uh, raise a question on the subject that we've done today or anything wider please go ahead thanks very much i suppose it's just a comment david that uh, obviously brett and claire will be showing 
you know uh, what to, that uh, strategy deployment process actually looks like and getting people to practice and use it during yeah, their and, uh, and sessions and that's, and that's quite summit, a yeah. detailed thing it's, it's over an hour and a quarter or something like that isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. they so just that. need to bring that they just need to bring their laptops with them yeah. okay yeah. yeah if you're going to join that one bring your laptops very good right we'll make sure that we tell everybody to do that yeah because they might not necessarily they might just be um turning up with a pad and paper knowing knowing some of these lean thinkers <laughs> okay well thank you for the opportunity everybody and um we look forward to seeing you in liverpool yeah yeah and you yeah thanks very much take care Cheers. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks. Visit our website www.leanuk.org or contact us at info@leanuk.org for any other information or how we can support you on your lean learning journey. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.